I would dare say that the demand for Rolex has never been higher. But is the brand a bit overrated? Or put it in other words, are they as true to their heritage as they and their designs claim to be? Well, some models are, and it's not necessarily their most popular models. Let's jump in. Alright, I'm Cohen and today I'm going to be a bit controversial. My apologies in advance, this is just my opinion. I'll keep it short, so please follow to the end before you comment your disagreements, but please like and subscribe anyway. Thanks. Personally, I feel I can spot a trend. Where an enormous amount of proper watch enthusiasts opt for holy grails among the vintage or five digit Rolex world. And I get why. Have a look at these. Magical, right? The similar trend we've seen within the growing interest for sport watches is the size increase. A common movement amongst almost every watch brand. And I admit it, I enjoyed large watches myself to begin with, but after years of interest, I started falling for the opposite. The five-digit Rolex sport models used to be slender, tall imprinted and better looking than any other watch out there. Now they are the same as everyone else, or obviously Rolex kept their design language better than no other. But they are quite hefty, for some, and flashy for all. My AD told me that he had a customer in search for something else during a board meeting in the bank where he worked. The customer and his co-workers started talking about their watches. They were all wearing suits, by the way. And this is no joke. 17 out of 18 were wearing a Rolex Submariner six-digit model. The final guy was rocking a Glaciuta CQ, also a sports watch, but hey, different and underrated and awesome. It ended up being the talking point and furthermore the inspiration for my AD's customer. But there are some things Rolex are still doing true to their identity and history and these are the watches I think you should get if you really want a Rolex. I love the GMT Master II and the Submariner, so don't misunderstand, but I do prefer and recommend the following. The Datejust. The Datejust 1262-00 and 1262-33, to name two, are true to their origin by carrying a 36mm size case and can be found in countless iterations. Steel. Steel and yellow gold, as well as steel and Everose gold. Head into the configurator on Rolex.com and knock yourself out with bracelet choices, bezel selections and dial colours. I'm 100% sure that there's a date just for everyone. At least that's another hypothesis of mine. The Oyster Perpetual 1260-00 can, like the date just, be mixed and mashed with colours, but you're stuck with the Oyster bracelet, which of course is splendid. The watch is also all brushed apart from the sides and it doesn't carry a date function. But have a look at the symmetry on the dial. Double block indexes, double lines, beautiful. The final watch I wanted to highlight is the Rolex Explorer 1 124270. Some would disagree, but this is the best move Rolex has done in years, in my opinion. Relaunching the 36mm case, an integrity move which somehow can be interpreted to mean that they still care for the enthusiasts and their own watch's roots. One of my all-time favourite watches. So that's it. Get a 36mm Rolex. Or a few of them can be obtained in bigger sizes too. But I'm here to fight the fight for the 36mm. Catch you in the next one, watch fam.